Good evening. This is CTV News for Monday, May 22nd. I'm Sonia Shavaspa. And I'm Byron Scott. Thank you for joining us. Well, the hunt for Darren Wint is over. The man wanting a connection with the vicious deaths of a D.C. family and the housekeeper has been taken into custody. Now, police tracked Wint to this Howard Johnson Motel on Route 1 in College Park last night. Now, according to investigators, two vehicles, a car and a small moving truck, left the parking lot with undercover police in tow. When they approached a Home Depot on Rhode Island Avenue, federal marshals moved in. Police say Wynn was a passenger in a car driven by a female and that his brother was driving the truck. All were arrested without incident. Still unclear, though, as to why Wint allegedly tortured and killed Sava Savopoulos and his wife Amy, their son Philip, and their housekeeper before setting the house on fire. And more than 300 people in Temple Hills are without water this afternoon. A water main break causing part of Fisher Road to collapse, prompting one lane to close. Now, crews are on the scene repairing the damage. The main expected to be uh, fixed by this evening. For updates, you can go to WSSCwater.com. Well, firefighters encounter heavy conditions battling a blaze in a three-story Akakik home. Around 10 p.m. last night, emergency personnel were called to the 142,000 block of Cold Harbor Drive. Upon arrival, they found a single vacant home engulfed in flames. While the cause is still unclear, officials say a natural gas line made it difficult to put the fire out, which caused the side of the house to collapse. Fortunately, no one was injured, but the house has been, is a total loss. This comes on the heels of another vacant house fire that happened on Tuesday in Fort Washington, and that caused about $100,000 worth of damage. And County Executive Rashawn Baker taking to the airways to talk about all things Prince George's. Now, Baker appearing on WAMU's Kojo Namdi show this afternoon. He covered many topics, varying from the Purple Line to economic development, and his plan to raise some taxes, 15%, to help fund public schools. Now, that plan has been criticized by Prince George's Chamber of Commerce, which calls for an increase that's half of what Baker is calling for. Does the Chamber have it wrong on this one? <clears throat> yes, they absolutely have it wrong. And I think they have it wrong because what they're thinking about is, okay, well, let's just cut it. You know, let's just cut this number. Or that we made the number up, that 15 cents somehow just came out of the sky. No, it was a very long process with the school system, our budget folks, saying what would, what would you invest in, what would make us move up, and then investing in those areas. Not a dime more, not a dime less. Baker also talked endorsements. The county executive says he plans to be in Baltimore next weekend when former Governor Martin O'Malley is expected to announce whether he'll run for president. He does announce that he's running for governor. I'm going to be one of his supporters. And, um, you know, I think he's done a great job. He's the type of person we need in the White House. I think he gets it from, you know, a local level as being mayor of Baltimore City mm -hmm. and from the governors. And I've seen him deliver. But for the here and now, Baker says he's setting his sights on next Thursday. That's when county council expected to vote on his tax increase proposal. Well, the Prince George's Chamber of Commerce says the county executive's goals for the school system can be attained without overtaxing residents. That's right. The organization thinks it has a solution, but has, which it has presented to both the county executive and legislative branches. And here to talk, a more, and talk more about the plan is David Harrington. I'm sure you got a lot to say about this. <laughs> well, you know, what, what we think is we, we agree with the county executive and that uh, there needs to be an infusion of investment to our school system in order to then begin to scale up the performance of the school system. The question is the rate, right? Fifteen percent is a lot to ask for small business who certainly hasn't accounted for this for their future you know, sales and operations. And so what does that do then to the overall economy if, in fact, we scale, we, if we go that high? Who's missing what? Because the county executive says 15%. You're saying roughly 8%? Right, about 8%. So who, who's not seeing what? I don't know if it's, it's, if it's not seeing. The question is, I, I think that we have to look at the imbalance. So mm -hmm. what the chamber did is look at, you know, how can we invest in our schools? What is the number we can invest in our schools? Achieve some of the same things that the county executives talked about. So he said he's talked about us being in the top 10. With our proposal, we would be uh, second in spending in the state, which right now we're number sixth. And we can invest in a program that is unlike anywhere else in the, in the, in the state or even in the region that is a middle college program that would allow students then to get a high school diploma 
and an associate's degree, saving residents thousands of dollars. Now, you guys are, are numbers people. You know, you deal with these numbers. Mm -hmm. How did you guys come up with this plan? How did you decide on that 8% number? Sure. So, so what we did was we took the aspirational goals that the county executive set forth. We agree with those aspirational goals. And then we said, but does it have to be 15 cents or 15% to do that? We said no. And, and, and again, as I mentioned, what we said was that we can still invest in, in the schools, still keep business in a way that's thriving in Prince George's County. Um, as you may know, in fact, uh, we have the highest foreclosure rate in Prince George's County. We have the high, highest number of homes that are so-called underwater. What does that do to then trying to move real estate in Prince George's County? We feel like that the 15, 15 cents is too high. I was going to ask, if it does go through 15 percent, is there a negative to that? Well, you know, w we think that it doesn't add to our economy. And so businesses are going to have to sort of recalculate then what, mm -hmm. what they do. Um, certainly then our real estate market is going to have to take and rethink then how do we still move homes, which, by the way, we are, we are whether we like it or not, we rely a lot on real estate. I mean, we do. Sure. Um, and, and so to do this, then how does that, how does that hurt? But, but let me say this, I know your segment said, you know, Baker versus the, the Chamber of Commerce and the county executive says that we're wrong. The fact of the matter is, is that we agree that there needs to be an investment in, in, in Prince George's County uh, in education. We, we feel that the, the 15 cent goes way high. All right. Well, Mr. Harrington, we appreciate you coming and joining us here as we uh, get set for our Memorial Day weekend. Appreciate you coming in as always. Appreciate it as well. Thank All you very right. much yes, for having us on. Thank you. The council is required to pass a balanced budget by June 1st, one that could either reject or restructure Baker's school spending plan. Members have not endorsed the higher tax rate, nor have they come up with an alternative plan. Well, the pressure for Governor Larry Hogan to approve the red and purple lines is building. Maryland's congressional delegation has written a letter in support of the projects. The group says that, quote, both systems will create needed transit between population centers. They go on to point out that it will provide employment and foster community development. Now, Senators Barbara Mikulski and Ben Cardin have signed on to the letter as well as representatives, including Chris Van Hollen, Elijah Cummings and Donna Edwards. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Sonia Shravasva. And I'm Byron Scott.